Betaine um, is a compound with many names. Some people call it vitamin B10 because it can be said from a metabolic point of view to, f to sit within the realms of the B vitamin group. It's also um, trimethylglycine, which makes it an atypical amino acid. Its importance is that it is a very effective methyl group donor. Now, methyl groups have a vitamin-like status in the body. They're essential for many metabolic steps. They cannot be synthesized in the body. They must be obtained from the diet. Uh, we obtain these, for example, in uh, folic acid, um, and B6 and B12 are also involved in the transfer of methyl groups throughout the body. But those metabolic steps are um, enzymatic and they require various cofactors to be present to allow the process of methyl group transfer and circulation to occur. Uh, for example, with folic acid, there is an enzyme mutation uh, which affects the enzyme called methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, which is quite common in Caucasian populations. I think, I think it's something like 15%, up to 15% in some Caucasian groups. And in these groups, if you have uh, one gene, one copy of the pair of genes which is defective, you will be th that much less able to circulate folate groups and you ha will have a slightly raised homocysteine level as a result. If you have two bad copies of the gene, uh, then this cycle is more dramatically impaired and your homocysteine levels go up even further. Homocysteine is, in general, it does not appear to be a very good thing. The nice thing about betaine is that it gets around those enzyme problems. And it's a way of, uh, even if you have been dealt an unfortunate genetic hand of cards, if you like, this is a way of short-circuiting that. The nice thing about betaine is that it's cheap as chips. It's a waste product, if you can believe that, from the sugar beet industry. Uh, it is, and that, of course, implies it's, it's a natural compound. It's not only present in sugar beet but also in freshwater shrimp and spinach, a variety of other foods, but in quite low levels. What the veterinarians have found is that by adding this to the diet of a, a number of economically important farm animals, you improve health and productivity. And it's pretty obvious that the same applies to humans.